Hey guys, welcome back to Garden and Grease. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take a pawpaw, which this one is looking pretty rough, and turn it into this, a full-grown pawpaw tree producing fruit. All right. And guys, before we get into this, please subscribe if you haven't already. Our little channel appreciates it big time. All right, so let's get into it. Whoop. I've got some footage of some that I had started last year at this time and have grown them into seedlings or saplings or whatever you would refer to it as. They're little trees and they're literally out in our food forest already and I've got more that I need to plant this week whenever the rain lets up. It's just been raining like crazy. All right, so what we're gonna do is my little pawpaw is I, I just didn't eat it fast enough. It's shriveling up right now. That is one of the reasons why you won't see pawpaw in grocery stores is because they have a very short shelf life. So in reality, the only way that you're going to be able to taste the delicious pawpaw, which there is no fruit that compares. The pawpaw is amazing and it's creamy and delicious. Um, is if you grow them yourself or you can find them locally grown. But my neighbor also grows them um, and her trees are producing fruit. Ours aren't yet, they're just way too young. So um, I'm just gonna kinda try to cut this open. This is a common pawpaw, Asimona triloba. I, I'm not good with the scientific names. But the common pawpaw has so many seeds in it. I don't know if you can see all of these seeds. So um, we definitely have a lot of propagation material here or seed starting material here. Um, and you can actually like, I, I would have last year, I've taken the seeds from fruit as I was eating them when they were still, you know, good to eat. This one smells a little, mm, uh, but the seeds are still viable and good to use. And I'm literally just picking all of these seeds out of here and they're covered in the fruit, the part that you would eat. I don't eat the skin. I usually just open these up and spoon it out and fish through all the seeds. All of this would have been, let me see if I can get in here, fruit that you would have ate inside there. It, you could, it's got a little discoloring to it, so it's not something that I want to eat right now. And what you end up with, now let me point you down here to this a little bit better. So from that tiny pawpaw, these ones are small, you can get varieties that are bigger, and I would like to actually find some. We've got this pile of seeds, which pretty much filled it. Uh, I, I would like to get better varieties with larger fruit and less seeds. Now it's slimy and I'm, there's kind of a, a thin coating that is also on the seed. You can see this little thin coating here. I want to get that coating off of all of these. Now, if you um, took your seeds and just didn't peel this coating off and you washed them and set them aside for this purpose, I would soak them and then just try to scratch that off. That way, um, that'll kind of hinder the germination from what I've noticed, but let's see, like that. We're gonna clean all of this off really good when we're done, but I'm gonna go through and kind of use my nail to puncture that little kind of clear sack. If it didn't have the fruit on it and I would have just kind of dried these off first, you would see it really good, but it just comes off really easy if you do this right away. When you open up your fruit, it comes off really easy like that with my nail. And you see where it's kind of stuck down right here. That's where the roots are gonna end up coming out eventually. All right, so I'm gonna go wash these off really good and come back. Okay, so we have our seeds and you can get a really good look at them, that's the size of them. They're pretty big seeds. 
All right, so drying them off isn't important, but it is important to wash off all of that fruit and get all the little bits and pieces off of it. Last year, I didn't get all of the little bits off and I also didn't check them as often as I should have. I had some molding, but despite the molding, I still ended up getting a pretty much, I think, 100% germination. I don't recall counting the seeds. If I, if I do, I'll put that on the screen, but if I find any footage of that. All right, so I have a wet paper towel here, two, like, you know, the, the half or size ones wet and I'm just going to put them on here now it's moist you know I wrung it out a little bit and I'm literally just going to put them on here they're going to get moved around anyway in the process so it's not really important how you put them on here and then I'm going to kind of start to close it up a little bit I want these to stay moist and they're gonna be in a bag in a moist paper towel. You can literally just dribble some water right into the bag, but they're gonna be in this bag for, oh gosh, I had mine in a bag for three, four, five months. All right, so I put them in a Ziploc bag and I'm gonna seal it up and I'm gonna write on here what it is and the date that I put them in the bag. Then I'm gonna put this little bag in the refrigerator. And I put mine like in my, like one of my bottom drawers. And, and honestly, I don't think it matters which part of your refrigerator you actually put these in, but they will need 90 days cold stratification, which means in your refrigerator or outside. In reality, you can do this process outside. You could put these into a pot of soil and put them outside and let them stay all winter. I didn't do that because I figured our squirrels or chipmunks or something will end up just digging them up like they do in my pots um, throughout the winter. All right, so after our 90 days in the refrigerator like this. I pulled mine out last year and I'm like, okay, well, there's no roots yet. Uh, what do I do? Maybe they're just a lost cause. Then I just sat this bag, cracked open, every now and then making sure that this paper towel was still moist. I literally sat it in front of the window in my kitchen on the counter, not direct sun, just it got some sunlight and maybe a little bit of mo um, maybe a little bit of warmth from the sun and being out of the refrigerator and a month later i opened up the paper towel and looked and i had roots i had nice size little roots out of almost all of them some of them just started to peak like a tiny little nub coming out of it so that's when I started putting them in soil. And I'm gonna show you the footage that I took this early this year in the winter time of me putting them into soil. Okay guys, we're gonna pot up the pawpaw seeds and I'm just gonna use what I have left of this Fox Farm uh, potting soil. And I'm gonna use these tall cups because they get a tall tap root. So I'm gonna start them in these. And I know they don't transplant well, but I don't wanna put them in a massive pot of soil and, and have some issues with there just being too much soil, too much moisture and stuff like that. So I put holes, I drilled holes in the bottom of these cups and I'm gonna pre-moisten the soil real quick. Now these pawpaw seeds, I actually had lost hope because um, while they were in the refrigerator, cold stratifying, every time I would open this bag up, the seeds would have like, um, like a mold, like a mildewy mold all over them. And I would wash them off and put them in a fresh wet paper towel and put them back in the refrigerator. I had done this multiple times. We had started the cold stratify on um, 916 and I took them out at 12:14. I honestly was like, these aren't gonna do anything anyway. They've been moldy so many times. I'm just taking the bag out. And then I put them in my kitchen window in this bag closed with the moist towel um, 
for like uh, ever since then, honestly. And I would look at them every now and then and they weren't getting moldy anymore. They were just staying the, sa the same way they were. And about a week ago, I had noticed some roots. So we're gonna pull these out and see how many we have to work with. Um, we don't know what um, breed, that's not the word I wanna use, but what breed the pawpaw tree was. It was just some random one at a local plant sale. The neighbor wasn't quite sure. I wanna actually look at these. I have one, two, three, four, and I don't wanna to touch these too much and damage that um, root. I am gonna take uh, the ones with these longer roots here and put them into these potting mixes and let some of these others, um, like that one and that one, I didn't even realize that one yesterday has a little tiny one. I'm gonna let them continue to try to grow roots. For the seed. And since this one curled, it's not like I'm gonna be able to straighten it out in any way. So I'm honestly gonna put it in there kind of sideways and let it uh, orientate itself. So I'm making sure that hole is big enough I can lay it down on its side. to figure itself out. So I've just kind of laid it on its side with the root side kind of down more. And I'm going to very, very carefully put some soil over it. And I'm gonna add some more soil to the top just a little bit. I'm gonna add about a, a total of an inch of soil on that. And I'm not gonna press, I don't wanna break that. So what I'm gonna do is water and let it kind of settle itself down in. I know it should be you know, intact with the soil all the time so there's no air pockets, but I don't wanna break that little root. So I'm being very delicate right now with it. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here with this one, now that's orientated a little bit better. So I am gonna take and put the root down in this one. It hasn't really started to curl too much to the side. Okay, so once you've potted these up into soil and all they are is a seed with some root in them, I let them sit in my grow room area so that as soon as they had any kind of green popping out above the soil they had light to help them grow and i did that for a few months and then when i started to put my plants outside to acclimate them we call that hardening off when i was doing that with all my vegetable plants i also did that with my pawpaw seedlings I would put them outside, bring them in, and then I left them in their little pots outside after they were done hardening off and acclimating to the sun, the wind, you know, all of the elements. And I left them like that so that they could mature in that pot so that I knew when I put them out in our food forest or out amongst our other tree-lined areas, that they were going to make it because those areas where I'm going to be planting a fruit tree um, tend to be uh, riddled with weeds and ivies and it's not a controlled environment as much as a vegetable garden bed. Okay so this guy is one of our ugh, got all kinds of stuff growing around one of our pawpaws we planted this summer um, and you can see why I don't just throw my seeds out. Look at all this weed pressure. If this was just a tiny little seedling, um, he'd probably have not a good chance of going here, but maybe this year I will throw some in and see how it goes and report back to you guys with that. 
Um, now, if you have a nice area that you are constantly weeding and tending to, and you want to put them straight out in the garden, go for it. You'll be able to take care of it a little bit better, but I kind of did hands off. I let it grow and then I put it out where I didn't really have to tend to it and let nature kind of take care of itself and they've done really well. And you can see there's a ton of roots in here and it really needs to get into some kind of soil, either a bigger pot or in the ground. There's a seed that it literally shedded the shed, the a hull of its seed. Okay, so we've cleaned this area up and I don't like to give them too much fertilizing product. But I'm gonna give them a little, just like a sprinkling of uh, all-purpose garden product. Mix it in here. I'm gonna make that hole nice and loose, really deep. So them roots, cause it sends down a really deep tap root. Take this guy. I always nestle in between the plants with my fingers. And just give a gentle squeeze. Luckily his roots aren't popping out of the holes and causing problems and tearing. Woo. Do you see that tap root he has? Be very gentle. Oh, buddy. Let me make that hole a little deeper just in case. Right. I do have some that were smaller and I have yet to put those into the ground. They are gonna go in this week when all of this massive amount of rain goes away and I can actually get out there and do some gardening. I'm gonna put them in the garden. Okay, so these are some that I'm gonna be planting out here this week when I get a break in the rain. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in here. I literally had, I believe, 100% germination and success. There's a little bit of nibbling going on on some of these, but that's okay. My biggest concern is that they've been in a pot a long time and they've got some pretty big root systems. They don't like their roots messed with. So, <laughs> but I've had a good success on the other ones. So I think we're gonna be a-okay. When they were in their um, pots inside and outside, every now and then when I thought about it, maybe once a month or so, once every six weeks, I would put in some um, fish emulsion fertilizer in the, you know, like mix it up in water. Just when I was doing my seedlings inside, I would do those as well. And then outside when I would fertilize my garden, I would also fertilize the pawpaw. I don't know if that is actually suggested because there's some plants that don't really need that, but there really is no nutrition in the soil when they're in a pot. So I figured you might as well give them something. Now don't expect that you're gonna be getting fruit in the next year or two. Um, it takes quite a few years for a pawpaw to mature and actually start putting on fruit. It needs to get big enough that it can hold that fruit because those clusters of fruit are pretty heavy. So, it, and you need to keep in mind that you need more than one pawpaw tree in order to get fruit. They need to pollinate with other trees. So my neighbor, in order to get a really good fruit set this year, she actually hand pollinated between her trees. Because this is such an ancient tree that we don't have the same pollinators now that we did way back when, they actually are pollinated by flies and beetles and we're always so stuck on keeping the bees around to do our pollination for us that we don't ever think about the flies, but they need the flies, they need the beetles and stuff to actually do their pollination. And because of that, they actually have kind of a hard time pollinating and getting a really good fruit set unless you have tons of them in a gilded area. You have uh, multiple pawpaws, which is we're actually planting some of our pawpaw trees along the property edge near her pawpaw trees. That way we can get a better fruit set on all of our trees. So keep that in mind, don't just start like one seed. You need to start multiple seeds and have them planted relatively close to each other. 
within, I would say, 30 feet of each other, no, no further away. The closer, the better. Now, another thing with the pawpaw and the actual um, pollination is you will get suckers um, that come up underground from the same root system as your pawpaw tree. As it matures, gets older, it will sucker out at the root system. And you may think that that is a separate tree, but it actually is not. It is part of the same plant as the original mother plant, and it cannot get pollination from itself, essentially. So you actually need a completely separated tree that isn't part of that same root system in order to pollinate. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and share this with anybody that you think could use this information. All right, guys, have a good one.